Welcome back to Sunday School. Well, last week, Aaron asked if we could learn um, some other things about Jonah and the big fish, things that are mentioned in the story, but um, that we'd like to learn a little bit more about. So instead of telling you that story today, uh, we're going to dig a little bit deeper and see what we can discover. And after this, you can go ahead and watch the video and then do some of the activities that I've attached for you. So who was Jonah? Well, he was a prophet and he was a person that was chosen uh, to speak for God and to guide the people of Israel. So Jun Jonah was a little unique, though, in that he was um, the only prophet that was sent to speak to the Gentiles, to the people that were not Jewish. His name means dove. And if you remember from the story of Noah's Ark, God sent a dove to Noah as a sign, a sign of peace. And he promised that he would never send a flood again to destroy the earth. So the, the story of Jonah involves restoring the peace between the people of Nineveh and of God. And the story took place about 750 years before the birth of Jesus. So what do we know about the city of Nineveh? Well, today, the ancient ruins of Nineveh are located opposite the city of current-day Masul, Iraq, across the Tigris River. The city of Nineveh is described in the book of Genesis as, have, as having been founded by Nimrod, who was the great-grandson of Noah. So Nineveh had a long history of being an enemy of the Jewish people, the people that were chosen by God. So Nineveh was a city of violence. It was known for its brutal treatment of those that they had conquered, and this really angered God. The other thing that angered God about the people of Nineveh was their pride, and their pride may have been in part because of their wealth and their power. The king had built very large walls around the city of Nineveh. They ran about 50 or 60 feet high, they extended along the Tigris River, and then they wrapped around the city. And um, there were five gates, I'm sorry, 15 gates, uh, main entrance gates, where you could enter into the city through these walls. And on each side of the gates, um, there stood these stone statues of bulls. So both inside and outside of the walls, the uh, king had created um, parks and botanical gardens and a zoo. And parts of these walls still exist today. So now that you've got a little bit of background, let's start on our story. So God called Jonah one day and he told him to go and preach to the people of Nineveh because the people were very wicked. So Jonah hated this idea because Nineveh was one of Israel's greatest enemies. And Jonah wanted nothing to do with those people. Jonah feared the Assyrians, that's what they were called, as much as any of the people of those days. And he wanted nothing to do with their criminal empire and he was delighted that God said that he was going to destroy them in 40 days. So you can only imagine the horror that Jonah must have experienced when he was called by God um, to go speak to the, the people, to repent, and to become uh, children of God, to follow the God of Israel. So now we know that the next thing that Jonah did was he tried to run away from God he, by getting onto a ship that was headed in the complete opposite direction of Nineveh. So instead of going um, northeast to Nineveh, which is about 725 miles away, he headed out the opposite way to Tarshish. They say it's part of Spain, and that was about 3,000 miles away. Well, God was upset about this, so he sent a storm, and um, it threatened to sink the ship. The sailors were terrified, and they pled to their gods. They, were, they did not um, worship the same god that, that Jonah did. They had other gods. And then to lighten the ship, they started to throw their cargo over. And I know Aaron wanted to know, like, what kind of cargo was on this ship? So I discovered that they were probably heavy clay pots. And they were probably filled with grains that they were going to be taking to another part of the world. So when this didn't work, when they threw the cargo over and that didn't work, the men decided that it was Jonah that was to blame. And that's when we find out that they threw him overboard, right? And uh, then the storm, we find out, stopped. Well, God sent a big fish. Um, some, some say it was a whale, but um, oh, we'll come to find out that actually whales probably did not exist in those waters. So he sent a large fish to swallow Jonah and to save him from drowning. So he was in the belly of this uh, fish for three days. And during that time, he prayed to God for help and he repented and he, he praised God. And then um, God got the big fish. He, he heard Jonah and he said, okay, big fish, throw, you know, you could throw them out under the shores. So where, where were these shores? Um, well, Nineveh ran along the Tigris River. So possibly that's where he landed. 
or he may have landed back on the shores of Joppa where he started out and that he would have traveled by foot um, to Nineveh to preach to them and to warn the people to repent or, you know, God was going to destroy their city in 40 days. So this, this theme of Jonah and the big fish, um, it, it follows the uh, theme that we find throughout the, the entire Bible. And that is that God loves, God's love is seeking us all of the time he, to save us and to save other people who aren't believers. And that we see over God of second chances. I mean, he gave Jonah a second opportunity to do it as he's been told. And, um, you know, God gives each of us second chances too. When we make a mistake and, and we discover that, uh, you know, we, we did make a wise choice and we, we ask for forgiveness, God gives us a second chance. God has endless compassion for us as believers and for, for others too, like the sailors and the, and the people of Nineveh who were not believers. So from God's point of view, uh, we're all ch his children, whether we're Jews or we're Gentiles or non-believers, whether we're saints or we're sinners, we're all deserving of a chance to repent and to live a life. And so when we respond favorably to God, all is immediately forgiven and forgotten. So I hope this answered some of your questions. And when we get together a little bit later on in Google Hangouts, we can discuss this a little bit more. So why don't we close right now in prayer and, and uh, let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, you have a wonderful week, and I look forward to getting together with all of you again next week. Bye for now.